I knew very early on in the process um, that I was in over my head. Actually, and it wasn't really journalistically in over my head, it was life I was in over my head. It's intense pressure to deal with at that age. I've always been ahead of everyone else and I need to stay ahead of everyone else. And the bar just rises and rises and rises. And for me, it wasn't the decision to do something horrible. It was the decision just to survive today, which then unraveled and unraveled and snowballed. The first time I remember doing something that I would consider deceptive in an article, and this is kind of the slippery slope beginning. It was after 9-11, and we were all exhausted and um, all having a difficult time reporting our stories. And I was sent to a man on the street interview. And um, for whatever reason, I didn't come back with the quote. And instead of just saying I didn't come back with the quote, I lifted a quote from the Associated Press. I could have simply added the words according to the Associated Press, but I didn't. What I found is that when you cross the line once, it becomes easier and easier to cross it again. It's um, like a tool set that you're building up that you didn't even know you had. People ask me why I did it, and there isn't an easy answer to why. What it really was, for me, was trying to survive without asking help when I knew I was losing my mind, but I still wanted to do my job. And at the beginning, it became cutting a corner here so I could do the job even though I'm falling apart. You know, I felt very sick and I didn't know what it was. What now I know is very clearly, let's say, anxiety. I remember times where I started to become paranoid and worried and not worried about whether someone from the Times was gonna catch me, but just worried about things that I never worried about in my life. 